Support for The Fitness Doctor provided by Rosano Chiropractic, combining the knowledge of nutrition, exercise, sleep, and chiropractic care. Dr. Rosano will help you heal faster and achieve your wellness goals. Rosano Chiropractic, located on Skyway Drive in Monroe. Welcome to The Fitness Doctor on ESPN 730, the program where we address your exercise, nutrition, and overall health needs. My name is Aaron Kennedy, and now an exercise physiologist in the School of Sports Sciences at Wingate University, the fitness doctor, John Aquaviva. Thank you, Aaron. Today, our topic is multifaceted training. A lot of our viewers and listeners are trying to gain an advantage in their training and weight loss programs. We'll discuss some of the non-traditional methods of exercise and dig, dig deeper into what they are and why they might be better than standard regimens. Aaron, what's in store for us today? The segment rundown is in studio guest Daniel Anchetta, quick Q&A with Dr. A, the social media breakdown, and fitness nuts in the news. Fitness nuts in the We had a good one, right? We had a pretty good one. Awesome. Pretty good awesome. One. No, no, not, not a pretty good one. We have a great no, one. Great one, right, great one. I like that. All right, my special guest today is Daniel Anchetta, a fitness professional and owner of Edge Performance Training right here in Charlotte. Daniel, welcome and thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, John. Daniel, uh, tell us a little bit about Edge Performance Training. Just a little bit of the parameters, who the uh, standard client is in your business. Our, our parameters are, our gym's about 5,000 square feet. Our standard client ranges from, it's hard to def narrowly define them. I have yeah. people from, I have folks who are in their early 20s to their late 40s, both men and women. Got it. More um, men than women, though, maybe? Um, or at this point, a little bit more, but again, yeah. our, our our program seems to appeal to both men and women. Got it. And uh, where's it located in Charlotte? We're located at 200 Dalton Avenue, Sweet C. I like that. Just All outside right. of Uptown. Got um, it, got it. Good stuff. Okay, we'll come right back. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. A little more on our topic of the day. Um, most people who work out are creatures of habit. That is, they find it comforting and are even thrown off by any workout other than the standard treadmill, stationary cycle, and elliptical machine. Regarding weight training, if it's included, is often the standard free weight machines or a combination of both. However, others are bored by the traditional methods of training and need to be stimulated daily to maximize the benefits. Today, we'll be discussing the latter, and with the help of my guest, Daniel Anchetta, we'll talk about some of the specifics on how he has helped hundreds reach their health and fitness pot potential. Along the way, we hope to hear from some of our listeners. Aaron, before we move on, speaking to listeners, how can they get a hold of us through social media? Yes, sir. If you have a question regarding today's topic or like to request a future topic, follow us on Twitter at Woo Fitness Doctor, W-U Fitness Doctor, or like our page on Facebook at Woo Fitness Doctor, or you can reach out to us via email at Woo Fitness Doctor at Wingate.edu. Now, by the way, you're going to be saying that in your sleep. You know that. All the Woo Fitness Doctors yes, sir, in gotta, there. Yes, Got to get it right. Yes, sir. Uh, so far, Aaron's off to a great start. I want to welcome him to the show. Uh, he is a rising senior at Wingate University, and he studies sport management, but he wants to get into sports communication. So he's joined us because um, our, our last intern, uh, Troy Press, he's graduated, and he did a great job for eight months. So I want to give a little shout-out to him and also our off-air uh, help uh, another gal, Michelle Jarquin. She helped us. So I want to give a little shout out to both those guys because they did a great job for eight months. You know, let's uh, get right into this. Now, a lot of people, as you and I both know, uh, they have trouble starting a program. Absolutely. And uh, they have trouble sticking in their program. So what should people uh, be looking for in a good fitness program? First and foremost, they should probably look for Look into the, look at the person who's going to be training them for the most part, the person responsible for their program. The most important thing, thing I feel is that that person's passionate about helping them, passion, passionate about helping them achieve their fitness goals. That's, sure. that's first and foremost the most important thing. Okay. And I, if I came to you and I said, um, I, I want you to help me, my, my guess is one of the first things, if not the first thing you'll ask is, what are your goals? Absolutely. Right? And if my goal is, say, what a tip, typical response to that is usually, I want to lose weight. How do you and respond to that? Usually, first I say, first we need to set some goals. How much weight do we want to lose? How soon? Um, people are usually want it now, want it right away. 
I try to make sure that they first, we have an ideal goal that they have set. And then after that, we set a bunch of smaller goals that are attainable over a short period of time sure. to keep them incentivized, to keep them encouraged, to keep them coming back. Got it. Now, what, what would you suggest is if these people are there to lose weight through this fitness regimen that you're going to offer them, what would be a realistic goal to meet on a weekly basis? One pound a week? What, what do you tell them? Um, one of the things I try to get across with everybody is that everybody's different. Okay. That we're all individuals. We have a lot of, we react differently to the training. One to two pounds a week. It, I usually go conservative because I don't, I don't, I don't want them to, you know, have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. But at the same time, I've seen some people do some pretty amazing things. Yeah. So it just depends on the person, but I usually tell them one to two pounds a week and we go from there. Got it. Okay, tell us a little bit about your your philosophy at Edge Performance Training. So if somebody comes to you and these uh, folks sign up for your gym, now do you have daily memberships, weekly memberships, monthly? How, how often or how long can people sign up for? People usually come in. We do six-month-long um, arrangements where people come in and they pay a monthly fee, and, dependent, and it all depends on how many times a week they come in to train. Got it. So they're, th- how much they pay will depend on how, m- how many times they plan on Two coming Two times a week, three times a week, four times Got a week. Got it. So it's all like prorated that. according to what they want out of the program. Yes. Now, what's the stand? Okay, what's going on at Edge Performance Training today, for instance? Is there a specific workout that's going on today or a s- specific set of workouts? What's going on today at Edge Performance Training? Uh, today, because last week we kind of focused, the last day of last week, we focused on a little bit more upper body. Today, we're focusing a good bit on lower body workouts. Um What's gonna, what you'd see today is guys using sandbags, which is a relatively new implement. Also, do using some resistance training bands, giant rubber bands, basically. And we also love to use the prowler, which is basically a weighted push sled that we use on our turf. And you guys use that a lot, right? A lot yeah. of push stuff. I remember. Yeah. I know you oh, mentioned yeah. off air a lot of push stuff. It engages a lot of muscles, a lot of the core muscles, burns a lot of calories. Absolutely. It's going to get the person in shape. Yeah. All right. We got to do something here. I, just uh, let people know if you're listening to The Fitness Doctor on ESPN 730. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva, exercise physiologist from Wingate University. In studio with me to my right is producer Troy. He's going to be here every week. And then over here we have Daniel Anchetta. He is a fitness professional and owner of Edge Performance Training here in Charlotte. We got a segment. What are we going to do right now, Aaron? <laughs> and now a segment called Quick Q and A with Doctor A. Let's this do is it. Where I shoot a couple questions at the doc, specifically on today's topic to get us started in the conversation. Doc, you ready? Let's do it. But before I start, I think you missed Troy too much because you called me Troy. My name's oh, Aaron. Did just, I, did just, I say catch you, just to catch you. <laughs> That's all right, though. <laughs> Question number one. Let's do it. Is going to a gym necessary? No, it is not necessary. As we all know, there's uh, home equipment and some of that stuff is good. But the reason that gyms and and, uh, like edge performance training is so beneficial is people need two things. They need a professional to guide them in their workout and two, other people help motivate them in their workout as well. And so it's a community of sort. And those two things usually make for a better workout. Question number two. How many days are suggested for minimal results? How many days? Uh, The the standard answer there is three. If you work out at least three days per week, you're going to get minimal results. But Daniel and I, I'm sure, would agree, as almost every other fitness fitness professional, the more the better. So four is better than three, five is better than four. The only thing I would suggest is taking at least one day off. Maybe even... Yeah, maybe even going to church that particular day. <laughs> a little plug for uh, our <laughs> question number three. My philosophy. Why are some gyms better than others? That's that's difficult. I think um, gyms aren't necessarily better than others. I, I think what what happens is some gyms appeal more to specific people that want to work out. In other words, like the standard gym, um, like a um, like a standard health club is probably a little better for the individual who just wants to do an individualized program on the elliptical machine, on the treadmill. But the other people that want to do like more high intensity training, there might be, um, you know, something like CrossFit or edge performance training, I think would be calling their name. So I would never say one's better than the other, but certainly they offer different things to those uh, clients. All right, that's the Q, quick Q&A of the day. Now, back to the doc. Okay, good stuff. We're in conversation with Daniel and Chetta. Uh, not only did this gentleman study exercise science at one of the strongest exercise science programs <laughs> in the universe, University of Georgia, but he is certified by an organization that I greatly respect, and uh, that is known as the National Strength and Conditioning Association, and that means that uh, he, he knows what he's talking about. So, uh, Daniel, let's, let's talk about a couple other things. 
Um, a lot of people come to you, a lot of people go to fitness professionals, and there's a period of inactivity. If, let's say I, I've been off for a couple months, maybe even a year or so. What is what is the best way for those people to get back in shape after a period of this inactivity? Well, I think first of all, it's really important that you're obviously cleared by your doctor to for physical activity. That's important. Yep. And then after that, it really depends on the fitness professional that you go to see. It's important that they give you a you'll get what's called a park you questions that yep. you know physical activity to, readiness questionnaire basically determines just that whether you're ready for activity. Right, and then. What a good, what I feel a good professional, sh- fitness professional should do is run you through a quick assessment to make sure that your movement patterns are correct. Yep. Make sure that you haven't acquired any bad habits, which 99% of people have. They if do. They're, That's they're why active. they need people like you. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean that, right? No, that, absolutely. They, they need people to guide them through. So not only are they, um, not only are they put in the right direction, but they're going to less likely to be injured and they're going to just maximize their workout. Absolutely. Right. I think the biggest mistake that people do make is they try to get started on a tra- on a training program, but they don't know where they're starting. You know, a lot of programs just kind of throw you into a group, throw you into a class yeah. and say, all right, do what everybody else is doing, where it's very much an individualized thing. This person might have a limitation in mobility. They might have you know, a certain tightness through a certain joint might have yeah. popped up during their inactivity. Yep. So if you don't determine that, this dysfunction early on, then how are you going to address, one, how are you going to address it? And two, you're probably going to get injured because of that. That's right. Very likely. Yeah. Now the average individual that comes to you, how many, uh, how many come to you in a state of inactivity, whether it's weeks or months? Some um, of them, most of them? Um, I would have to say at least half of them do. That's a, that's a big percentage, oh, and of absolutely. course, knowing that uh, almost everybody is almost everybody is inactive, you know, inactive, that doesn't surprise me at all. All right, Aaron keeps bugging me over. He's got something to talk about. What, what's what's the next segment? Next segment is fitness nuts in the news. Little segment where we find a person or an activity in the fitness world that is a little bit nutty or off the edge, so to speak. So who's this who's the nut this week? Fitness nut in the news is Kurt Busch. Now, there's a lot of talk about whether NASCAR drivers are really athletes, athletes or not. Are, yeah, but we'll, we'll dedicate yeah, a whole show yeah. to that. <laughs> so. Last weekend, Kurt Busch participated in the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600. That's 1,100 miles of driving. So he finished the Indianapolis 500 at 3.30, hopped on a plane, and was in North Carolina by 4.50 for the start of the Coca-Cola 600 at 6 o'clock. Now, while on the plane, they chucked his blood pressure, gave him fluids, and he drank 32 ounces of liquid water and beetroot juice pretty interesting (laughs) he also ate high potassium and protein fiber bars uh raisins and beef jerky so he only completed 907 miles because he blew an engine in a coca-cola 600 but he finished sixth in an indianapolis 500 that's really impressive you gotta love racing to want to drive 1100 miles in a circle (laughs) yeah so did you hear about this that he actually did both yes i'm surprised i I get the paper on a regular basis even on the weekend and i didn't hear anything about this only tony stewart is the only one to complete it only four people i tried so had done both in the same day. yes sir yes sir and only tony stewart has completed it so that's really impressive that a nascar driver actually finished sixth in indianapolis 500 and the any car stock any cars are 2,000 pounds lighter than stock cars so it takes some skill to maneuver between both of them on the same day well as much as anything he's just nuts because uh um not necessarily to do both but do both in such a short period of time i know nothing really about race car driving i would just think that it's pretty intense emotionally and you have to stay engaged for a long period of time oh and mentally too yeah i would think big deal big man now here's the question for you daniel our our race car now now you can speak freely here even yeah, though we're in absolutely. Charlotte North Carolina it, are they athletes they are now they if they if they weren't <laughs> in the past they have to be now you, you think they b- belong in that category of being, I would say uh, so because I've seen the training programs a lot of them put themselves through and I think they've all realized that there's a huge benefit to being in great shape so got it Got it. That's good stuff. That's a good fitness nuts in the news. This is Dr. John Aquaviva. You're listening to The Fitness Doctor on ESPN 730. We'll be, more, we'll be back right after these messages with more of The Fitness Doctor. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. 
Hi, and welcome back to The Fitness Doctor, the program where we address your exercise, nutrition, and overall health needs. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva, an exercise physiologist in the School of Sports Sciences at Wingate University. Aaron, what do we have on this segment? This segment rundown includes special studio, in-studio guest, Daniel Anchetta, still in the building, more on edge performance training, social media breakdown, and the takeaway. All right, let's get back to it. We are discussing fitness centers that engage their clients in a variety of exercise regimen to meet their peak fitness levels. Today, our guest is Daniel Anchetta. And uh, before we go on and continue our conversation with Daniel, uh, Aaron, give us the social media info. Yes, sir. If you, will, if you have a question regarding today's topic or would like to request a future topic, follow us on Twitter at Woo Fitness Doctor or like our page on Facebook at Woo Fitness Doctor or reach out to us via email at Woo Fitness Doctor at Wingate.edu. Awesome. You're going to be saying that uh, for months. You, yeah, you're gonna, you don't even need that piece of paper <laughs> in about uh, a week. Uh, Aaron, thanks for being here. I no, appreciate this. No problem, this. man. I appreciate mm-hmm. the opportunity. Um, okay, let's get back to our guest, Daniel Anchetta. He is the owner of um, Edge Performance Training here in Charlotte. And uh, th- these guys come at it from a couple different ways. But before we get back into what he does for a living in at Edge Performance Training, let's talk about what we um, discussed in the first part of our show. Um, we said, um, what should people do if they're just starting a program and they've had months off of uh, inactivity? And we talked about uh, some type of assessment, Absolutely. some type of um, clearance from a doctor is always a good idea. Yeah. But these people especially, they benefit from having a professional because it's going to maximize their, their uh, workout time, right? The time Absolutely. that they spend in workout. And also, it's going to decrease injury. And, and uh, that's, that's all- the biggest thing that'll derail people a lot of times. You think about people who are just getting wanting to get back into shape. Yeah. And they say, I'm going to get in shape. It's New Year's or the summer is coming up and they want to look good in a bathing suit. You've got a really small window of time when people are have yep. that initiative to want to get in shape. And one of the fastest ways to derail that is them getting hurt, them getting injured. That's right. And in fact... We, we know we're, in general, we're talking to a scared squirrel, aren't we? Like yeah, any like absolutely. false movement, they're, they're going to go away. And it's interesting because, uh, especially when we do high intensity training, the chances probably, I haven't seen too many uh, research studies on this, but my, my guess is the popularity of, of uh, workout programs like the ones you offer, more and more people are going to do studies. And it, and it may very well show that more people um, get injured. And so and we don't want that to happen. And that's one of the reasons why fitness professionals like you being present and leading those exercise regimens are, are important. Well, and like I said earlier, it's really important to have an accurate assessment done. It's really important to make sure that you know where you're starting. Yeah. If people have no idea, you know, they might have an issue and it's not addressed and you start piling what a lot of folks say in our field, piling fitness on top of dysfunction, all of a sudden you have a huge opportunity for injury coming up. So... Hey, let's talk about your gym, uh, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes it different than other gyms that are out there? Um, I f- feel the way we differentiate ourselves is the programming, the way that the variety that we have in our uh, in our programs. Also, I really enjoy the camaraderie and the atmosphere that we've kind of created with our clientele. Sure. I'm always I'm always telling my clientele I'm always ecstatic that I've had so many cool people to train because. I mean, honestly, I really like all of them. They're great yeah. people. They're all really encouraging. The people that have been with me the longest or my vets, they, they encourage the brand new people all the time. Before I can walk over and say something to a new person to try and get them going, one of my people have been, that's been around for a couple of years is already saying, hey, man, it's okay. You're, you're doing a great job. You know, I, did the sa- I felt the same way when you started. You just got to stick with it. I like that. And is there anything other than this camaraderie that's built amongst the, the, the clients, is there any equipment that you have or anything that any programs that you offer that are unique to edge performance training? Um, I think it's pretty, what we have that's pretty unique is the use of a functional movement screen that, and corrective exercises. So we don't ident- just identify dysfunction and work around it. We mm-hmm. actually go through the trouble of screening it, trying to fix it, and then screening it again a few weeks later to make sure that we've taken care of it. Um, now, now, Daniel, explain that a little bit. Like, how do you, what do you guys do to kind of like, uh, in this area of corrective training? You mentioned that term earlier. Right. Talk, give a specific example on that. Well, a lot of folks, they come to us and we, when we, we I'll take you through a very specific instance. We'll have them do a 
deep squat okay. uh, in a specific way that shows us whether with they free have free weights. No, or, with, or with no the, weight, with basically a dowel, and it'll it. show the, it'll show me positioning. It shows myself and some of the interns. When we administer the test if they have any limitations as far as flexibility, strength, stability, and if there are stability issues. If they're, and they're, we make sure there are issues that we can deal with. There's also a way to see that if it's something that we have to refer to a specialist, like a chiropractor or an orthopedic, but if it's an issue that we can deal with with very specific exercises to strengthen someone's hip, to strengthen someone's abductor, whatever the muscle might be, Got then it. we're able to take care of that. Got it. So you guys, um, uh, this is, is something that's pretty common where you put them through a series of exercises mm -hmm. and then you watch them closely to make sure their form is correct. Because again, you want them to get the most out of that workout, but also you want to make sure that there's no injury or no existing condition to keep them from fully participating in this form of activity, right? Absolutely. And we've also noticed that people who move better, who have better ranges of movement, better motion overall, they they feel better, they're looser, they, Absolutely. You know, there's, there's not that issue of tightness going on. And they're actually able to push their their uh, workouts even even harder because yeah. they're not worried about this issue that they had before. That's right. You know, one of the most interesting things is I've always said that um, sometimes it, people have to be out of shape after a period of being in shape to appreciate what it's like to be in shape. And I know that sounds uh, <laughs> um, probably dizzying to the, to the listener, but let me yeah. explain what I'm talking about. In other words, if you're in shape and then you go through a period of inactivity, Sometimes you have to go, you have to be in that period of inactivity to, to really appreciate what it was like to be in shape. Absolutely. And that, that's truly one of the beauties of fitness. It's one of the beauties of exercising on a regular basis. And you bring that to folks and you're not only getting them to a point of, of fitness, but sometimes to the highest level of fitness they've ever experienced. My guess is that's true for a lot of your clients, isn't it? Absolutely. We just did a uh, challenge where I brought in a bunch of dads in their forties and I was able to obviously help them lose weight, get moving again. And one of the, once the program was over, I was able to talk to a number of them and without fail, all of them were like, you know, I haven't moved like this in so long. I feel so much better. Awesome. One of the, the guy who actually won the challenge, he was just, he was saying, he's like, I haven't felt this good since my twenties. He just turned 40 that past week. So it was great. You know, it's great to see that. It's great yeah, to see that absolutely. people get it back. People get that ability to move that ability and they feel great and they're yeah. like why did i ever let this go i don't understand yeah, yeah. and yeah in fact that's what's uh, kind of goes back to that saying saying i made and, and that is uh sometimes they have to be in that period of inactivity to really appreciate what you bring them i hear a bunch of stuff uh ringing and and oh. uh, uh tapping away yeah crazy. social media so yeah. i understand some somebody wrote in uh had a question or two for daniel yes sir uh from twitter twitter handle danielle underscore 90210 <laughs> she asked i've never heard daniel, of those numbers <laughs> she asked what is your preferred method of working out oh that's interesting yeah, yeah you're the right? fitness professional they're like what do you do um what i always tell like i say what i always tell my people is a lot of what we do with our workouts with my clients is pretty structured around how i like to train I don't, I get bored pretty quickly with different things. I, I like a lot of variety. Yeah. And so I'm always trying to find something new that interests me. Ever since I've stopped fighting, I was always trying to find something that was exciting, that was fun. Okay, now, no, we're not talking about um, uh, street fighting now. No, here. no, no. Off air, we were talking about this. Just yes. give a little background on what you meant by fighting. Um, I used to fight professionally in, in mixed martial arts and in Thai boxing as well. Got so, it. Okay, so, so just clear that up. And, and this is, this is, I, I'm making an assumption here, but it's probably pretty direct assumption in that this is one of the reasons why you open Edge Performance Training is that you wanted to offer a variety of workouts, not just the standard treadmill, elliptical, right. which is fine, but you just wanted to offer a great variety at a fairly high intensity. Yes, absolutely. And so tell me, yeah. what was your what was your most recent workout? My most recent workout was yesterday. I was at the gym and actually one of the interns was there with me and I think he, I had him working with someone else and he was watching me and he was giving me these funny looks. Yeah. But, What'd you do? Uh, um, I was doing what's called a free movement where I was doing plyometric jumps and movement on, onto different platforms that required balance, that required a little bit of strength. Uh, one of my one of the other trainers that works at the gym was laughing at me because I was joking. I was making sounds like a monkey jumping around, having a good time. <laughs> but uh, I think that's, and how long did you do that? The probably about training? probably about you know I it wasn't high intensity stuff where I was doing certain reps. I was just yeah. moving before around and like I like in my gym I have a lot of different areas I can move around. Yeah. 
that's jumping. I have a, actually something called, everybody calls it a jungle gym, but it has a lot of bars that we hang from. I was jumping onto that thing, jumping from bar to bar, doing pull-ups, doing squats, single leg squats off of different pro, unstable platforms. I was just having fun. And I think that's really important. Your, your workout in particular um, and, and your gym in general sounds like a perfect place for a person that has fitness ADD. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? If somebody wants to experience something new, it's a great place to come. Now, how long did you do this workout where you're doing plyometrics and pulling and just stuff? It sounds like a lot of calisthenic stuff where you, the only resistance was your body. Yeah, a lot of uh, body weight stuff. And then... How long was this workout that you did yesterday? Probably about 30 to 45 minutes. It's a long time to sound like a monkey. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you probably it was just did that fun, for though. some of them. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Uh, you're listening to The Fitness Doctor on ESPN 730. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva from Wingate University. In studio with me is Daniel Anchetta. He is the owner of Edge Performance Training. I understand we got another question for Daniel. Yes, sir. Nick from Charlotte posted on a Facebook page and said, I see on the Edge Performance Training website that functional fitness is discussed. What exactly is that? Well, that's a good question. What is functional fitness? For me and for our program, I feel like functional fitness is something that you know, like the word says, is functional, something that applies to your everyday life or applies to your regular activities. Yeah, That's different for a lot of different people. Some folks, it might be being able to play with their kids and be active with their kids, whether that's on a hike or playing soccer or playing yeah. catch. For other folks, it's playing intramural sports that they enjoy. Um, so functional fitness, I believe, has to apply across the board to a lot of different folks. But Give us it, some specific examples. So something that you saw or that you led maybe in the last few days or mm -hmm. that something that your trainers led some folks, your clients in. What, what would, I would uh, say, define that? Um, a lot of it has to do with stability um, when we talk about injury prevention, that type of thing. So for instance, what would be an exercise or exercises that you do that kind of tap into this functional fitness? Um, one of the ex exercises we'll do is side steps with a resistant, heavy resistance band around your waist and okay. being able to not deal with just the resistance of the band, but then when the band uh, pulls you back one direction to be able to change that direction to deal with a lateral acceleration on that lateral uh, plane. That's, that's something that you do whether you're playing rugby and sidestepping, playing basketball and trying to do a crossover, whether your kid comes at you really quick and you got to step out of the way. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of applications to that. So. Sure. What about um, any form of uh, resistance training that would fall under functional fitness that you guys do on a regular basis? Because um, like I always yeah. think of, for instance, like a lunge mm -hmm. is functional fitness. Yeah, absolutely. We use, uh, and then with if you want to involve the resistance training, now we use uh, sandbags, which have actually become a little bit more popular lately. I don't see a lot of fitness professionals using them. But the way that the sh the weight inside the sandbag shifts around a lot, yeah, um, it's unstable. Um, that's gotten a bad rap in the last few years, but obviously within the right context, it's definitely helpful. Got it. Good stuff. All right, folks, if you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to the Fitness Doctor on ESPN 730. In fact, we only have seconds left here. I want to thank Daniel Anchetta from Edge Performance Training for being here. A um, little stuff, few things that we talked about that it's good to change up the workout. Absolutely. Functional fitness is important for everyday activities. You want to make sure that if you're starting a program after a while that you want to be cleared by a doctor and go through certain assessments to make sure that you are ready to engage in the program that you're going to do. Absolutely. Check out Daniel and his crew at Edge Performance Training. I want to thank him again for being here. Uh, and remember, folks, you don't stop training because you get old. You get old because you stop training. Join us next time on The Fitness Doctor. Support for The Fitness Doctor provided by Rosano Chiropractic. Combining the knowledge of nutrition, exercise, sleep, and chiropractic care. Dr. Rosano will help you heal faster and achieve your wellness goals. Rosano Chiropractic, located on Skyway Drive in Monroe. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. 
named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports, small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life.